Hello, my name is Meiko from Makuchino and today I'm going to show you how to paint simple flowers with watercolors. These flowers are super simple to paint and you can use the end result for gift cards, for posters, for anything you want. In this video, I'm going to use the watercolor book by Hanne Müller. The watercolor book by Hanne Müller is a light but steadily sewn book with a dark gray synthetic lining, a red bookmark, an adorable high quality cover that feels absolutely extraordinary in your hands. And the additional rubber band allows you to secure the cover to protect your artwork. The watercolor book comes with 30 sheets and 60 pages of natural white 200 grams per square meter acid free paper that has a fine grain surface on both sides that can be painted or sketched on. So you can use all the 60 pages because they all have the same surface that allow you to get creative without wasting any precious paper and space. It is not only rough enough to keep pigments firmly in place and to allow excellent control, but it's also smooth and soft enough to make the watercolor the center of attention, which makes this the perfect watercolor book for artists of all ages and abilities. So let's get started. And the first thing we want to do is to apply masking tape all around the edges to cover about 5 to 8 millimeters of the paper to create a frame. This step is optional, but the tape will help us to create a seamless pattern. Now we can go ahead and prepare the paint we will need for the petals. First, dip your watercolor brush into some clear water, load it up with red or pink colored watercolor paint and then place it into a mixing palette. Here we want to create a light shade of red. For this step, dip your brush into some water again and mix it with the paint you just prepared in the mixing palette. I would recommend to create enough red color paint before you start painting so you can keep a similar shade of red throughout the whole painting without having to mix any new paint later. Now we only need to prepare some yellow color paint but this time we don't need as much as we will use this color just to add beautiful accents to the flowers. And we're ready to go. Clean your brush and prepare another bowl with clear water that we will need later. And now load up your brush with red paint we just prepared and then slowly press down the brush onto the paper so the bristles lay flat on the paper while moving it in a curvy motion and then quickly lift it up. Now do the same and create a smaller C-shaped curve that is looking towards the first petal we just created while keeping some space in between. This is going to be the first row and the center of our flower. And now we just need to surround the center with even more petals by creating a few more rows around it. For this step, create a bigger C-shaped curve that is looking towards the center around the inner part of the flower we just created. The important thing for this design is to keep a little bit of space in between the petals. But to mix up the design, you can also connect some lines together from time to time. Since we use the tape on the sides, we can easily paint over the tape and create the curve, which will make the flower pattern look more seamless later. You can intensify the color by adding more paint on top, but I find the flowers look best when you don't oversaturate the shade and keep it rather pale. While the paint is still wet, we can now add a nice gradient effect to the flower using the yellow paint we prepared in the beginning. For this step, clean your brush in the clear water again, load it up with the yellow paint and then distribute it the same way as we created the petals. With this wet on wet technique, the yellow paint can just melt into the red colored paint and create this beautiful gradient effect. The excess paint and water that is floating on the paper, you can simply soak it up with your brush and paint more petals around the center. Here I created smaller C-shaped curves facing towards the middle just to fill in the gaps and to make the flower look even more interesting. And we created our first watercolor flower. Again, create two C-shaped curves that are facing towards each other to create the middle part of the flower and then add larger curves to create a few more rows around it. And while the paint is still wet, add a little bit of yellow color paint the same way on top of the red paint to create a nice gradient effect. For my flowers, I created three rows of petals but you can create more if you want. Now you just need to repeat these steps and create as many flowers as you like. To create a seamless pattern, I would recommend to add the flowers right at the edges of the paper where we added the tape. You can fill the whole paper with flowers or if you want to add a text or some other design to the center, you can just keep the middle part of the paper empty. And while you paint the flowers, try to keep some space in between as it will also add some green leaves to the painting later. The most important part is to not try to make the flowers look perfect. It's totally okay if they look rather messy. We just want to have fun and create the general idea of a flower. The great thing about watercolors is that you can only lead its way and then let the paint and paper do its magic. 
Since our flower pattern still looks a little bit too empty and boring, we can now add a few green leaves in between. To create the leaves, we need a little bit of black and green colored paint. Mix them together and then dilute the paint with a little bit of water. We still want to keep the shade of the color rather light and pale. And now we can paint the leaves. For this step, you can mix up the pattern. I added a small green branch with three leaves on it that I created in this oval shape with rather sharper edges. And I also added a few more leaves to the sides to cut off the shape a little bit. This way we keep our seamless pattern. And I also added a few leaves right next to the flowers. To finish off the flower pattern, I added two more flowers to the center and then let everything dry. Once everything is completely dried, we can remove the tape. If you're worried about ripping some of the paper, you can simply use a hair dryer and melt the glue a little bit that is underneath with the hot air. And this is how our pattern turned out. If you want, you can now go ahead and add a few more details by adding a few dots using the leftover red and yellow color paint. I think this dotted pattern makes everything look more cute and romantic. And we are done! You can now either keep it the way it is in the watercolor book, or you can also just cut it out and create a poster, greeting card with text on top or anything else you have in mind. This pattern and paper allows you to get really creative. Here is another version I made with more vibrant colors and two small hearts in the center. But you can get really creative with it. If you need smaller or larger paper to work with, Hanemule is offering a huge variety you can choose from. It is available in A4, A5 and A6 sizes in landscape or portrait. Make sure to follow Hanne Müller on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date. And for even more information and inspiration, you can also check out their blog, website and YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Take care.